there wasn't a lot of research that needed to be done this week because uh, there's really only two races that we should be looking at with Atlanta, and that's last year. I don't yeah. care what happened past last year. So It doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it really won't matter no. past that. No. So, this is it. so last year, what we know is that, once again, Chevy was absolutely dominant. Uh, in July, they were four of the top six finishers, including the winner, and that was Elliott. In March, they were five of the top six finish, finishers, including Byron, the winner uh, in that one. In the Xfinity series, Chevy had six of the top nine in March with a win and had seven of the top eight in July and the win. That's how dominant Chevy was both on Saturday and Sunday at Atlanta. And so, but you do now, uh, let's, 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 let's start with this. So if any, the good thing is if you're a Hendrick fan is, is even if you get bad news about the penalties and whatever have you before this race, it's not going to affect this race. And so don't be looking at it as they're taking a part out and now they were faster before, but now NASCAR has found something and now they're going to be slower this week. That's not going to come into play at all. So it showed last week that that part was irrelevant. Yes. It, if anything, it, it would almost make them one to one more to get playoff points back. There you so go. Yes. It, it might good, light good, another yeah. fire under because yeah, not, this penalty, no matter what happens, is not going to affect the way I think of their speed because I know Sunday just proved that part had zero to do with their dominance this season. So, um, and also you, you look at too, Chevy has won 78 stages this year. They've won all four of the races. And if you look at super speedways last year, who won the, the fall Talladega race? Chase Elliott, Kendrick, Chevy. Who won the Daytona summer race? Austin Dillon, Chevy. Who won the Talladega spring race? Ross Chastain, Chevy. So the only race of the next-gen era that Chevy, Stenhouse won the Daytona 500 this year. Who The only time uh, in the next-gen era that a manufacturer not named Chevy won was Cindric in the 2022 Daytona 500. Everything else since, Atlanta, Daytona, Talladega, all Chevy. This year has been all Chevy. So I would struggle to say <laughs> um, that anything other than Chevy, especially when Toyota I have here, has not won in Georgia or Atlanta. Granted, we could say this, but they didn't win last year, so that's all that matters. But they didn't even win in the old pack. It was 2014 was the last time a Toyota wow. won. In the even pack. in the old package. Even in the old package. At Talladega, they're two for their last 17. And at Daytona, they're one for their last eight. So knowing that, we knew they weren't really going to be really good in Phoenix, and they weren't. So there's trends have all carried over that I think your pick is between a Chevy and a Ford. And <laughs> granted, with all the Chevy talk, I, I would, which, which we'll get into, we're, we're starting with the Chevys, is I think that's probably your way to go. Uh, before we do that, and now CJ's picks are back. So now that he's back, and by the way, CJ's going to do, he, uh, he's going to have his uh, recorded F1 report to preview the race this weekend. That'll be on Friday, I believe. So not only is CJ back giving us his picks on time, but he is also going to be uh, raring to go for the rest of the season with F1 reports if you're a big F1 fan. So check that out. All right. Now. Uh, oh, and by the way, before we move on, also, I, I don't I don't push this all too often. But hey, man, if you really like what you see, subscribe to the channel. Very important. We really appreciate that. Also, we're going to let you know about some comments that were made and some questions. So we're going to get into that in a little bit before the show is over. We appreciate that. That's awesome. Uh, same thing for hitting the thanks button and donating to the channel is also great. The like button is awesome. That's that's also very important. By the way, we're getting close to 2,000 subscribers now. So we're getting close. So let's yep. see if we can get over the hump uh, sometime real soon. Uh, as far as subscriber uh, traffic is concerned, how many now with CJ back, that makes it a little easier for us to kind of connect with more. more uh, well, actually, it's harder to tell you the truth uh, because we have an extra person that may or may not like the same drivers we like. So uh, we had f only four this week. I was going to say guess five, so I was close. So four. All right. Um, and uh, let me see how many me and you had. So me and you, that, that would have uh, happened. Let's see. We would have had three, four, five, six, seven. You and I would have seven, but with CJ coming in, it's four. So what are the four? 
Byron? No. Uh, Blaine? I'm the only one that didn't one do Byron. I would have presumed Blaine. Yes. 12 to 1. Yep. Um, Chastain? Mm-hmm. Um, Bowman? Yep. Three, so one more. One more. Uh, it's a long shot. LaJoy? No. Haley? Yes. There it is. I knew it had to be a 50 so to 1. Three ride. Chevys and Blaney. And Blaney. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then the, the, the seven, just you and I, uh, that would have been Busher, Suarez, Jones. Yeah, those are, the, those are the other three. I'm shocked CJ didn't go with at least two of those guys. The ones I just mentioned? Well, yeah, there's a longer shots, and you know CJ, he sticks with. He goes to the top. Uh, yeah, yeah. He had he actually did his same routine he does at the super speedways, where he goes with like the top eight, ten drivers and odds. Yeah. Because it's that one, you know, one of those. It is. It, it's. It's. It is going to be. It. It's not. I don't think it's as. It's not as a big a crapshoot as Daytona or Talladega, but it. But it's. It's. It's close. It could, yeah. Because there, there's a lot of guys there on this seat. There's a lot of sleepers that could win. I mean, look at Corey LaJoy last year. He had a chance yes, to win this yes. race. Um, and he, we just talked about how Toyotas, you could kind of punt on them out of there. Um, and you just get a lot of the, even the bigger name drivers left. Like Harvick hasn't been great there. Almarola hasn't been great there. Chase Elliott's not in it. Um, it kind of takes a lot of these top guys out of it, and you get some good guys at fifty to one, um, especially if they're Chevy. I, yeah, it's yeah. There there are some good odds here for for if you want to go deeper in the in the pack. Yeah. For and, and I and I would for, do that myself. I mean, I don't have a problem putting a buck or two on Barry or Lejoy and so forth. So, uh, but it's just the way it worked out this week. And I see that yep. you even put again. I usually put big money. But I see that you've actually uh, you you had three drivers that you put seventeen each on, yeah. Um, and I had two at twenty five each, and one at thirteen. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's why I we don't have as many drivers as CJ for that reason. So, all right, uh, we'll start with Hendrick and why not? So Byron two for two in his last two. That's just the reason I stood away from him. I mean, at ten to one. In a, in a race that is going to be a little bit kind of like a crapshoot, I'm just not going to go for three for three. And I almost did it because of that. I'm like, I, I, we talked last week. Can he really win two in a row? <laughs> and he did. Yeah. And I'm like, can he really win three in a row? But I'm at least getting him at fifty to or ten, 10 to one at uh, for three in a row. And he led 111 laps last year, so it's like that's yeah, where. Sure. That's where I struggle, and Hendrick has been so good. I mean, they've led, out of the last two weeks, 87% of the laps, 506 to 579. They went 1-2-3 in both stages in Vegas, 1-2 in both stages last week in Phoenix. They've just been so good. All four cars in the top ten, that's like, somebody's got to win. And we know Kyle Larson, this isn't his, this isn't his cup of tea. Yes, which is really, once again... And, and we we stayed away from him again. Why not? I mean, yep. it's, it's I, look again. I know Atlanta's not da- Daytona Talladega yet, and maybe it never will be. But it's still a similar type of. And all you had to do was look at his results here last year. Yeah, thirtieth and thirteenth. Come on, man. I mean, you can't be putting Larson at the co-favorite at this track. No, you just can't do and it. I keep going like I did in Daytona. I said this over and over, and he didn't do it again. One top five, and now 36 drafting track starts. So that's 36 starts at Atlanta in this package, Daytona and Talladega. He's got 36 races on those race, those tracks. One top five. <laughs> yeah. And he's a co-favorite. Yeah. That's just like, there's Come on, absolutely no, no way. It, he's 0 for 36 and wins. I was like, get yourself a second top five before I even contemplate. Yeah. But 10 to 1, like that. That was the quickest no I've ever had. I'm like, no, not for no. 10 to 1. Yeah, five like definitely, week. but not Larson. Yeah, that, so it's like somebody's got to win out of that camp, so I'll just roll with the 10, to, at least roll with the 10 to 1 factor. Well, again, we, we all had Bowman, and this is the thing that's like, well, why not? He's double the price of Larson. He's a better yeah. racer than Larson at these tracks, and he's, hey, by the way, if anybody's noticed, 
He's leading in points. Yeah. So he's actually having a pretty good start to his season, and this would be a perfect race for him to carry the mantle of that Hendrick uh, banner uh, in, in victory lane again. And he's also the only driver to have a top 10 every race. And he was, oh, by the way, fifth in Daytona 500, a track that he's always struggled at. I don't think he had a top 10 in Daytona before he gets fifth. And then Atlanta, Ingram, he was 10th in this race last year. So it's not like he was bad. He was 10th still. We saw what Hendrick could do. Chase Elliott won the summer race. Chase Elliott's not in this race. So, again, somebody's got to win out of the Hendrick camp, and you're getting double the odds for the points leader. And even so, you want to – granted, we keep saying you, – you, and we're right. You cannot talk about prior to 2022 here. But you can talk about confidence in going to a place. Sure. And if you look at 2021, his finishes there were third and fourth. So it's like, well, he's got confidence there. So he clearly knows that three of his last four have been in the top yeah. ten there. And in this race last year, the only guy in the top ten now all what season. Happened? Do we remember what happened? Because there, uh, there were some wrecks last year. I think he got caught up in a wreck. He started eighth. He qualified eighth. So he was up front, too. Okay. Um, so I like him for, for oh, 20 yeah, 20 to 1. Oh, yeah, 20 to 1 is the deal. If he's 10 to 1, that's a different story. But you're getting 20 to 1. It is. 20 to 1. So that that's the reason why I obviously went big with him. And then uh, Josh Berry, again, he's he's in a car that won this, not this race, but it was the summer race last year. And he also, in the Xfinity race, finished second. Yep. He left 13 laps. So he's finding momentum. He was in the top 10 last year, or last year, last, last week, week yeah. in Phoenix. Um, we know what the car can do. We know this is a drafting track. This isn't necessarily one he's going to go out there and – Get you it's match the gas pedal and, and go. Um, so if attrition happens, he's in the car. Who's to say? You know, one, yeah. So that's why I went his direction. Yeah, it makes sense, well. absolutely. Uh, also sticking with the Chevys, Kyle Bush is 12 to 1 and Dylan at 40 to 1 for RCR. Uh, both of them, yeah. If you look at the results last year for both drivers, was really bad. Uh, yeah. Of course, Kyle's with Reddick's car, but Reddick wasn't very good here last year either. Um, at least Kyle came back with a with an eighth place finish last week, which was okay, even though he never really competed for the win. Um, but yeah, I, I just with Kyle, uh, I, I need to see a little bit more. Still, I think he's he's in a good he's in good shape. But at twelve to one, there's a, a bunch of other drivers that I can go to. I don't really need to be. There's no reason to really go with Kyle this week in my mind. No, not a 12-1. to 1. I, That was a little steep, especially 33rd and 20th last year. Just, and he's always, he already has a win on the season, too. So Yeah, and, and he's, he's admitted that these type of tra- drafting tracks are not strong seats for him. Granted, he should have won the Daytona 500, but this has not been a good track for RCR lately either. Um, Austin Dillon hasn't been particularly good there. He was 35th in both races last year. As you said, Reddick wasn't great in this car last year. It just... Kind of all By the way, thanks for, for reminding me about the Daytona 500. I, I didn't, you know, I just, man, if Kyle could have won that, and Harvick would have won last year, I could have had a really good season so far this season, and I just keep yep. getting screwed up at, at the end you of the races. So, yep, yep, you would have had it, but yeah, it's, I just don't, I don't feel like 12 to 1 no, is the right number. It's, yeah, it's just, it's just, there's other weeks that he's going to be 12 to 1 and 10 to 1. There are. And he's going to be a better odds on history chance to go with yep. in this week. Yeah. And Dylan is just real. I don't know what happened. Cause Dylan is good usually uh, in these packages, but I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was just bad luck that he got into, into Rex last week, last year. He, he did. I remember that big one uh, in July race. He hit hard over there in turn two, um, but it wasn't like he was a factor to win. He was top. He's probably a top 10 car. Was he going to win? He didn't have Chase Elliott or Corey LaJoy or that kind of speed. He was there, but he got caught up in reps. And I think that's with this track, which uh, it's, it's one of my burning questions that are coming out um, Friday's article, or maybe Thursday. Um, but why is Atlanta tougher than Daytona and Tal- People might want to look at Daytona and Taldega package. You do want to look there, but the main difference of why this one's tougher is it's a mile shorter in length. So that makes it more challenging. At least Daytona and Taldega you got the wider turns, an extra mile. There's a long, it's a, a mile. It's a, more real estate to work with. 
Atlanta, they're, it's like a bull ring. These guys are cruising around there, and, and a wreck in Atlanta is even harder to yeah, avoid. Yeah, because sense. You're only going – I don't think you could really fit three wide for very long there with something bad happening. And the track's been repaid. There's so much grip. There's no tire fall off. Um, so you just have no time to breathe. You're just constant. So that's another reason why they shorten this race from 500 miles to 400 that's good. miles. So, yeah. Um, oh, do, yeah, another I looked, 100. No, th- thank goodness they did yeah, that. Yeah, take it off. Because I looked, too, last year's race was four hours in duration, the 500 miles. They had 11 cautions for 65 laps. That was the summer race. It's 100 miles shorter, but it was only 40 minutes quicker because there were 13 cautions for 64 laps. Okay. So this is going to probably Caution have fast. some carnage. Yes. Yes. So it's going to take some luck. So I feel like to take luck, you got to be at the front. You got to be consistently there. And those guys are not consistently there. So I think it's better to go with somebody you trust a little bit more. Well, track house, uh, off to, as we've said all along this season, they're off to a really good start the team of Chastain and Suarez. And this is without question, the week to take them both. Uh, Chastain 12 to one Suarez 25 to one. They both were excellent here last year. Chastain finished second in both races last year. Suarez top tens in both races last year, including fourth in, I believe, the March race. Uh, so, yep. yeah, at 25 to 1 with Suarez, that's easy. And Chastain, this is the reason why you, you, you can bypass Kyle in a way, because you have someone like Chastain, who's also 12 to 1, who's a much better bargain at that price. And I was happy to see Chastain at 12 to 1. And I understand why, again, based on the track, the way that it is. That's why the odds come out the way that they do. But there's no way Ross Chastain should be getting 12 to 1 and Kyle Larson getting 10 to 1. Uh, so we'll just he, keep slamming that thing uh, as, as much as we can uh, because this is a good one. Yeah, Chastain should probably be 10 to 1 with Byron. It should at least, Larson shouldn't even be 12 to 1, but they at least should flip. Um, he led 42 laps in the spring race, this one. He led 32 laps in the summer race. He was there to win both. Um, this car, Kurt Busch drove in 2021, won there. So this car has had three straight top two finishes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, uh, and, and we just talked about Chevy being the top manufacturer. And if Elliott's out and we don't trust Byron to go three straight, Chastain's the next guy up probably. probably. And if not him, Suarez left 13 laps in this, in this race last year. He started seventh and finished sixth in the spring or in the summer. Uh, Chastain started second in the summer race, so they qualify well, they lead a lot of laps, and they finish well. And Suarez being 25 to 1, with, again, yeah, we talked about earlier, if it wasn't for the pit road speeding penalties, he probably was in the top 10 again. There you go. Phoenix, he would have a top 10 in all four races this season. So I like that for 25 to 1. That's slam dunk to yeah, me. Yeah, you got to take the team uh, right there this week, no question about it. Yeah, you put 17, that's the most tied for the most that you invested this week, and I put 25 tied for the most that I put on on uh, my two dri- my top two drivers this week as well. Uh, Spire Motorsports, and we're going to talk early about them this week, and why not? And that's because this is a Corey LaJoy race. Uh, this yes, is a race is. where if you're going to take uh, Corey LaJoy a couple times a season, this is one of them. Fifth in this race last year, uh, and and things are going okay. I mean, it's you know he's in the top twenty in points, and you would think, well, that's not all that great. Well, he's usually you know twenty eighth or twenty seventh. Yeah. Now he's eighteenth, so he has shown a little bit of an improvement. But if he wants to be serious about being an, uh, uh, hey man, we've really turned the corner, and we're we're uh, we're going to be a playoff contender. Well, this is the type of race that he's got to do well at. Uh, Ty Dillon is two hundred and fifty to one, uh, but Ty is just not. Uh, he's not in any way, shape, or form, getting off to the type of start that Corey the Joy has. No, and these aren't his great tracks. So, Ty, I punted on, but as you said, LaJoy was fifth in this race last year, and the only reason he was 21st in the summer was, remember, he wrecked with Chase Elliott going for the win on the final okay, lap. Okay, there you go. He was second, yeah. and he led 19 laps. He was in the top five uh, for much of that final stage. So, he should have had two top fives in last there year. And we know Daytona... He's phenomenal at. So if you're going to use that same package and and you're getting a guy for fifty to one, that's a no-brainer. He, it's baffling to me that he has as many top. No, he has more top fives on super speedways than Kyle Larson has, and he's fifty to one, and Larson's ten. <laughs> yeah, right. That just shows you how backwards yeah. it is. He's he's a better bargain on a super speedway than Kyle Larson. So 
I love him at 50 to 1. It's probably one of those situations, too, where if you're ever going to roll the dice, let's say you have a, some extra funds in your sportsbook account and you want to roll the dice every once in a while, I mean, this is the perfect time to roll the dice. Because, um, say, you know what? It's regular week. Uh, all right. Uh, I don't have a whole lot, so I'll put at least a buck on LaJoy, maybe two. But if you want to go for it, this is the type of week to go for it with LaJoy. Put 10 bucks on him. See, see yeah, if he, see if he can make hurt. 500 bucks. You know? So, why not? So, all right. Uh, Stenhouse. Yeah, big surprise. No top 10 since Daytona 500. Boy, man, he just turned the corner after that Daytona 500 win. Right back to where we thought. And this is not a week for him. And he was 31st in both races this last year. Yeah, he let, He's He got caught up in wreck. Okay. He was uh, he led 22 laps in the spring oh, race, okay. but caught up in a wreck. Um, it, there's a reason that his name used to be Recky Stenhouse instead of Ricky Stenhouse. Known. So I just, on a track that much shorter than the bigger yeah. ones, it just, and he kept finding trouble at the bigger yeah. ones, I just don't. Stay like away from about, him. Yeah, firing, getting flash, light, lightning striking twice. I don't see it striking twice for Stenhouse in five maybe races. Maybe he could get into. Uh, maybe he could be the one that gets into Ryan Blaney. And uh, you never know. Maybe he. Yeah, but for thirty to one, it just was. There was no way I was take, touching that for thirty to one. Uh, calling, you got AJ and Haley, and again, I put money on Haley. To me, with my money yeah. situation, it was between Haley uh, and uh, LaJoy. And I went with Haley because uh, Haley was also solid here last year. Yep. And But again, it doesn't mean I'm not going to put money on LaJoy because I will. Uh, and AJ was third in the Xfinity Series in March. And, you know, he could be okay in, in these races. So, um, But th- th- they have not gotten off to the start that they wish that they would have gotten off to, uh, either yep. one of these guys. So this is a big race for both of them. And Haley, out of his eight, I know I talked about this for Daytona, at his eight career NASCAR wins, we're talking Xfinity Series included too, five of them were at drafting tracks. And you look at how good he was there last year. It, he's a strong play yeah. at 50-1 to one too. So you have to go his direction. If you go LaJoy, you have to go Haley. That, that's, yeah, kind of to me. Go, go with both of them. Might as well. Yep. Because Jones is the other good long shot. At, yes. But he's a little less at 30-1. to one. And that's because he was solid in both races last year. Uh, and and, and you, you, this is also going to be a big race for Jones because they have been struggling so far. Uh, th- yeah. They have to accomplish something because also Noah Gregson actually raced twice last year here. So he yep. has some yeah, experience Gray- here. He does. And, and Jones, Grayson's been frustrating in the sense he's 32nd in points, 24th, 22nd, 20, 30th, and 29th are his finishes. So that has been disappointed. But I look at Jones a little more disappointing because Grace is a, at the end of the day, he's a rookie. Granted, he ran for Hendrick last year, but Jones looked really good last year. And this year, he's 28th in points. He's only four spots better than a rookie teammate. 37th, 19th, 19th, and 21st are his finishes. But here last year, he was fourth in the summer, and he led 10 laps. And he was 14th in the spring. So I'm really looking for him to at least make a difference on Sunday. And he was up front, so um, for 30 to one, to me, that's a better value than what you're getting for Stenhouse because the proof is in the pudding with him. Uh, we move, uh, from Chevy to Toyota and, uh, we'll start with, uh, Wallace and Reddick and, you know, they're both still not where they want to be for sure, but at least Reddick is headed in the right direction coming off the third place finish last week. Um, Wallace had a couple of top 15s here last year. Uh, Reddick now in a different car, but as we said with Kyle Busch, it didn't matter. Uh, so, um, and, and by the way, in, in the different car, he was pretty bad too. Um, the only good thing about both of these drivers are the odds. So you're getting yeah. 18 to one with Reddick and 20 to one with Wallace. I decided to put uh, a little bit of money on Wallace uh, because he's, uh, he's 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 shown that. Not only, of course, on the super speedways, but even here, I believe, uh, even though he had those top 15s, he was he had, he had some pretty good momentum here. So I thought, OK, I'll put I'll put some money on one of these guys. And I, and I decided to go with Wallace. Yeah, I, that's the smarter way. I almost went with Wallace. I just ran out of, uh, of money to, to go his way. I mean, because you remember, right, he was second coming to the white flag at this race last year. He just got wrecked on the final lap coming to the checker. So he was there 14th in the summer race. This has typically been a good track for him in general. Um, and he said he's good on, he's good on drafting tracks. Reddick, I, I was shocked they weren't flipped 
because Reddick didn't even finish the top 25 in either Atlanta yeah. race last year. He wrecked in the Daytona 500. And we noticed, I remember talking after Daytona that I think, or no, after uh, Fontana, five of his last seven races, counting Fontana. So these last two he has, and the five of his, well, no, he crashed to Fontana too, so that's wrong. Five of the last seven prior to Vegas, then he was involved in a crash. That, yeah, and that's that true. Yeah, day. we talked about that a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So on a track like we just talked about behind me, that's shorter. Wreck happened. <laughs> Watch out. He wrecked last year. I just, I just feel like he's better odds of a wreck than a win, where Bubba has probably better shots than a win than a wreck on the other way around. He seems to be a little more methodical on these Yeah, I don't know. If Reddick, get better I odds. agree with that, and I do think even more so. I think Reddick should be more like, tell you the truth, 25 to 1. Yeah, I'd be a little more interested. It, just, it baffles my mind that somebody, again, you're kind of using rate, name recognition with, with Reddick that Suarez had the stats that we just talked about. Yeah, they they should 25 flip. to 1. Yes. Yes, I would think that should be the other way. So I'll take the bargain on on Suarez, but Reddick, yeah, that just not eighteen to one. Joe Gibbs, and it's very rare that I'm going to go an entire race, any race at all, and not pick a Joe Gibbs driver, because yep. especially with Denny Hamlin there, and especially with the fact that Hamlin is usually really good at these types of tracks. But 29th and 25th last year it was 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 all I needed to see, including Bell 23rd and 19th last year, and we know Martin Truex. And uh, drafting tracks. So I was like, yeah. you know what? No, I I'm going to stay away from the all four of these Toyota drivers and try to. That's why I boosted up a little bit more money this week on guys like Blaney and Chastain. Same. Yeah, the, the Gibbs guys, like I said, the Toyota trend that we talked about at the start of this just doesn't already favor them. No top but... fives this year for Denny Hamlin or Martin Truex Jr. No, three of their four finishes have been 11th or worse. They just need to get a top 10 rather than focus on a win. And, and they've got the bad luck, too. And this, tr this track is going to take some luck. I just don't see them winning. And in Truex, we talked about his heyday. Back when this was just a normal mile and a half track, that he, back in 2015, 16, 17, and 18, like, he was great. We, we call him like the intermediate king. He was winning everywhere. He never won here. He's 0 for 26 in oh, Atlanta. Combo. This just has okay. not been a good track for okay. him in general. Um, Gibbs might be so, the best choice here because you're getting 60 to 1. Yeah, if you're going to go with one, it might be yeah. him. And he won the Xfinity yes. race there last yeah. year. But again, I look at this guy's overly aggressive too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if, if somebody's getting caught up in a wreck, it's him too. So I just, I just don't feel good about the Toyotas this week. Ford, we'll go with Ford now. RFK, Kozlowski, and Busher. And uh, I was close to putting money on Kozlowski, and then all three of us would have had money on Kozlowski. You and I put money on Busher. It's just, I don't know, it was a combination. It was really what it was, was, was it's just, I wasn't really, I know 18 to 1 is normally a good number, like we said with Reddick in a way. Uh, because of how good Reddick normally is, but I just thought, nah, I can do better than eighteen to one on Kozlowski. That's that's a little low for me, considering the team and he hasn't won in over a year and a half. And but I I I think you know if you you, you guys took him and I understand completely why. And Busher's, I just felt I got a little bit more money with Busher, so I'll put four bucks on him, try to make my money back. But uh, yeah, I I could have seen myself putting a little bit of money on Kozlowski as well. I actually went Kozlowski over Wallace. That was my final oh, two. Okay. I was like, where do I? Uh, and that was only because he, he was 12th in this race last year. And that was kind of at their low. They were still learning each other. And I look at what RFK did at Daytona. And they were 1-2 and RCR was 3-4. And they were there. And um, Kozlowski's won the spring race in uh, Atlanta twice. Granted, it's the old package. But my determining factor with them was Kozlowski has won seven races on drafting tracks. And Wallace is one more. Yeah. And I'm like, it, it's a better, and you're getting the same similar odds, sure. 18 to 1 and 21. I'm like, I, he's running better. He led the only laps that Ford led in Vegas. Um, he was running, he was one of two other Fords other than, yeah, him and Harvick at Phoenix, the only one that laid laps. So he's leading laps. He's kind of running there. So if people take themselves out, I don't think he's going to win just baseball speed. I look at, if people start taking each other out and he's there in the end. Well, that's usually win. how Kozlowski wins races anyway. It is. It, it kind of seems this race is going that way. And, and Busher, seventh last spring, 
he had a car capable of pulling the upset in Daytona. Um, so it's like, why not with Especially him? taking them both. They're, you know, you're hoping, just like Daytona, that they're going to be hanging on to each other. Yeah, and he was seventh in the spring before on the old configuration. So seventh, seventh, lucky number three, number seven. So it's like, you, you know, it's a, yeah. it's, you look sure. out and okay. you're getting a 25 I'll, to one. I'll believe so, it, yeah. Uh, yep. It, 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 I, I, I like them because I know we're going to get into Stuart Haas later, but I just don't like the way Stuart Haas runs there. Other than Blaney, Penske's not great there. Um, and this package that I, I just feel like somebody from Ford has to carry the baton. And maybe it's RFK. All right. Now uh, let's move on to uh, Penske. And uh, Penske, uh, yeah, we, we all just took one driver, and that's it. And that's Blaney yep. at uh, 12 to 1. Uh, again, he was solid here last year. Uh, coming off, uh, again, even though he was nothing more than a top 10 car, he lucked his way up to a second place finish. So psychologically, that could go well for him heading into this race. Logano had one top 10 here last year. Sindrick was third in July. Uh, re- I was probably involved in a wreck in March. And you are getting 30 to 1 with Sindrick. So not the worst idea in the world, considering he won the Daytona 500. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah, if you wanted to put a couple of bucks on Sindrick, I, I, I'd be okay with that. But Blaney is definitely the one because, as we've been saying, you know, he's it's, it's time for a win. It is. Blaney in – Overall, four top fives in his last five there. And he was, in fact, he was running in the top three. He was drafting with Wallace and they got wrecked. Oh, okay. So he was in the top three in the spring race. Coming off, he said the top fives. Um, he's got to get a win. He's won at Atlanta in the past. This is a great spot. Um, Cindric, I just didn't trust. 30 to 1 is a good number for him. I just, he just seems off this season. Yeah, so far. And, so, and, and we can segue into the, the Wood Brothers in this too because I'm, I look at because Cedric and Burton are both sophomore drivers. They're both in their second year. And Burton, 26, 15, 26, 35th. Cedric, 23rd, 28th, 6th, 25th. They just, Burton's 30th in points. They just seem to me, they're just missing something yeah. for me to just all of a sudden think they're going to win. Um, and then Logano is the other driver. It just, his last six Atlanta starts, he's finished 23rd, 10th, 15th, 19th, 9th, and 26th. And his last three starts on a season, he's finished 10, 36, 11. And that just doesn't scream race winner for me, um, especially for 12 to 1. So I thought out of that group, we talked about Blaney's the safe pick out of those to go with. And by the way, speaking of Burton, uh, I made my move on, uh, on, on fantasy. I made the first well, I, move, yeah. the first transaction of the fantasy season. Well, besides Elliott's uh, injury, uh, yeah. was me dropping Burton and picking up Chris Busher. So what did you think about that swap? I think it was smart because Burton just doesn't look much better than he was last year, and Busher looks better than he was last year. So you're getting, I guess, the veteran leader, the leadership, I say. But kind of like my method was, is I want my bottom guys just get me top 20s, and Busher can get you that. Yeah, he can Burton, do that, yeah. Just said, yeah he, Burton's got a lot to prove here lately, and, and Busher, Busher could go out and win this week. So that's, that's a wise move. Uh, Gilliland and McDowell uh, – 50 to 1. We know McDowell would be the choice over Gilliland. Uh, but I don't know. We just haven't really heard much of McDowell for a while. No, and in, in this race, even last year, 24th and 15th, just never was much of a factor. So I would punt on both of those guys, even for getting better odds from 50 to 1. For and both. then Stuart Haas, Harvick, Briscoe, Priest, and Almarola, great odds across the board. I am surprised that. And neither one of you put money on Harvick at 25 to one because he, I, I'm just a little surprised he was 25 to one. Now I understand we just went over the whole thing about Hendrick versus Ford, but, and I know he didn't have anything last year, no top tens here, but, I, but look, look what he did last week. You know, he's proving yep. that he did something different with Kevin Harvick this year. And we know he can race. On, we know he can draft. That's not a problem. So, yeah. I mean, if he's 15 to 1, it's a different story. But at 25 to 1, I thought, there's no way I can't take him. I almost did. I, I sided more with Keselowski on that, too. Just, again, I know what I'm getting out of him on a drafting track. And Harvick, just 21st and 12th last year. I'm like, these aren't great numbers. And Stuart Haas across the board was just not good there. Um, yeah, drafting Briscoe, partners, not 
I mean, who? Al Marola? Well, who do you think is better, Al Marola or Priest as a drafting partner? I would say Al Marola, but Priest is just not what I thought this season yeah, so far. I, mean, I was surprised that you guys did not put any money on both of you guys. You were Priest, 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 Priest in the preseason, and you didn't put anything on them today. No, I, I think Cole Custer's sitting back right now <laughs> doing one of these. Like, what? I told you so. I mean, 36, 33rd, 23rd, and 12th. He looks exactly – those are what Cole Custer could have done yeah, in right. car last year. So, looks no different. Stuart Haas wasn't very good there last year. So, I'm like, I'm definitely not going that direction. Uh, Almarola's got three top tens and 14 tries in Atlanta, nine of which are 15th or worse. And it seems like he keeps getting caught up in wrecks. I'm like, I don't trust him. Um Granted, he was eighth in the spring race, but that also is his second best finish ever there. And we're even talking back to his Xfinity days. And, and by the way, it was good for Briscoe to uh, to finish in the top ten last week. That should hopefully give was. him some momentum. But he was only fifteenth and sixteenth yeah. there last year, so it's. I feel like they've got they've got some work to do before I I would take them, especially if you get better value. Well, the good thing is, is you're getting thirty five to one with Briscoe. So. Yes, that's. That's really key with that one. But yes. can't bet them all. All right. No. So, your top three? Uh, honestly, I'm going to go Bowman, Chastain, and Suarez. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I would go Blaney, Chastain, and Bowman. That's the way I would go. The only reason I didn't say Blaney was I know if, if I've got three Chevy bullets right there, there you go. that I think one of them I think should win. 